so yeah, I just was non-compliant mostly with whatever their orders were, and it didn't. Um, you know, then you're going to be uh, penalized more. And what happened? The result was, I think, after a while, they just kind of threw their hands up and like, I don't know what to do with this kid. So just, were you just a terror kind of? No, I was um, unfocused, and you know, so I wouldn't comply necessarily to what they wanted, and then. Um, that was very frustrating to them. Now, my mother, you know, your mother must have had kids every 10 seconds. My mother had one. The first 10 kids, 16 years. <sighs> Beat it. Beat it. I challenge I you. I can't. Um, she, uh, my mom had uh, 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 six kids over, um, what is it, uh, 15, 15 years, 10 years. But it's an interesting, the Catholics will say, and two miscarriages. <laughs> So I got a text from my mom yesterday. I'll just read you what came up on my side. Um, Just in terms of how weirdly macabre kind of older Midwestern women are. I'm off to a funeral. Anyhow, you were saying. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't. That's it. Yep, I'm off to. uh, Yeah. It's she's something about something about my niece and nephews. Anyhow, off to a funeral at her age. My mom can go whenever she sees a funeral. She can go, and she'll probably know the person. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so few per- people their age where it's like, yeah, I'll probably. It's like a like a club promoter. Yeah, <laughs> going to a club. Like, I'll probably know one of the other promoters or something. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Um, so my mother had three kids in the first three years of their marriage and it was overwhelming my oldest brother had uh got very sick uh he had appendicitis and um so he had a really high fever and the doctors told her that that's going to impair him and so she focused on my brother like intensely like this is i don't know because it's her first i guess i don't know yeah and that my, seems to be the way yeah my understanding is that she was very unhappy so she'd moved from her small hometown near north kansas city to this other small town in the midwest and apparently not fond of her in-laws and she was surrounded by them mm. so i imagine she felt quite trapped and then one two three she has kids in three years overwhelming again no help what you're telling sure- me is your father was a three pump chump is that what you're telling me <laughs> probably <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang, bang. And then my father was working 60 hours a week because he'd started a new business and she was doing the bookkeeping and did the bookkeeping with six kids all these years. And she would also iron clothes. Things you think about, like, how did you do that? But then if you have a narrow channel of responsibility, just this, this, and this, make food, do the laundry, do the books, I guess, right? Because in our world, it is... um it's running the uh, level five rapids all the time. Yeah. And pretending you're going to put up a sail. That's the goal. I'm going to sail these rapids. Well, you don't sail rapids. Well, I'm going to try. Because yeah. that's the only way to really achieve success. Because somewhere out there is the serene waters where someone picks up your boat and you don't even have to do anything except yeah. walk around and lounge. And then your art goes away. But um, that's for another podcast. That's another podcast. <laughs> but uh, so I think by the time I came along, I was very different. And again, I haven't asked my sisters what I I wonder if I was a particularly fussy baby because I don't feel like we ever attached my mom you and your own your old lady yeah yeah I felt like we were like ah we're a miss and so that's the way it was and so for me by the time I was in sixth grade I was done I made the decision I'm leaving you guys can do what you're gonna do but I've got to cut when I was 10 years old I distinctly remember walking around the west side of my house when I was 10 alone feeling the way George Orwell did and uh, just that desolation of loneliness. I'm just like, I'm leaving. Also, I, you were aware of the west side of your house? I know. At yeah. 10 years old? I knew, I knew that's, what, yeah, that's just, yes. <laughs> You're seeing a, the orientation of a man's brain right now. I've literally never heard a human being describe their childhood house as I was on the west side, other than like the White House. Well, but I was outside. I was walking around by myself outside. Collecting it's my no thoughts. better. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> I remember thinking distinctly, I have to leave. I'm going to miss my family and friends, but I have to go. And this wasn't the childhood feckless weapon of the threat of running away. No. no it was not it a was, hollow threat. It no, was no. like, oh, it was a decision. I, I can't. 
Yes, I, I, yes. All Tell I me knew more. was I have to live in a city. So I'm growing up with 10 out of 2,000 people. And I recognized early, it was like, no one's like me here. I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm here, I'm doing whatever, but I just, this isn't my place. Yeah. I have to go. And so, yeah, that decision was made very early. And I remember not feeling emotionally torn, like, oh, I'm going to miss the family. Yeah, I very much agree. My brothers and sisters were great like routinely like take me places great my i went to i i used to go to the chicago my brother was an usher an andy frayne usher in chicago so i used to go to the chicago stadium when i tell you i've been to a hunt i went to a hundred games at the chicago wow. bulls and blackhawks i went to a bulls game how old are you neil I'm so old, I saw someone mistake Michael Jordan for Orlando Woolridge. That's how old I am. Someone, a little white girl goes, are you Orlando Woolridge? And I remember Michael Jordan being like, no. <laughs> like, like what? I really swear, I feel like it's one of the last times it happened to him. Um, but, and Cubs games, probably 100 cut. like, wow. Uh, and then when I was in high school, my brother Kevin took me to comedy shows in New York. And like, so I'm very grateful to them. But I also remember distinctly being like, I got to get the fuck out of here uh -huh. from the emotional tenor my parents were setting. Yeah, it was interesting. I there was a guy who uh, was he was a child of uh, he was a, a, a child of my, one of my parents closest friends and that they, they didn't live in town and they came to visit. And he told me recently. He said that, um, he said I was four or five or something like that. And we were outside playing hide and seek. And I think he said he was eight. And he was like, I guess impressed with me in such a way. He's like, this kid must be adopted because he's so much smarter than the rest of these kids and so much different. Like, he's not part of this family. <laughs> so it was such and this just happened a year ago that I was, he told me this. I was like, oh, there's fucking validation right there for me. The guy remembered it? Yeah. He told I, me that. Yeah. That's so, must have been so gratifying. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, I knew it. I mean, a lot of show businesses, I knew it. Yeah. That's true. A lot of show businesses, like, I had a suspicion <laughs> <laughs> that I was weird. And something like a little something, I just knew it was something that I should move to Chicago. You ever read Bob Dylan's autobiography where he said, and I don't feel this way, but he said, I feel like I was born into the wrong family. I think a lot of people, I have not heard that one, but I think a lot of people probably felt that way. But I don't you feel also that- Can they write songs? <laughs> right. <laughs> here, here, the other thing is it was necessary for us to become who we were. And uh, so I have to be grateful for that. Had I grown up in a city, I might have been uh, quite- happy to then do something else but like that desperation of i've got to find my expression and then it becomes through this other means and i'll bring this back to the add thing and how it um manifests in my life because add no plus what we call add or adhd is is what um that's a gun. Well, what kind of gun? A gun. Don't worry about it. I don't know why gun came up, but shotgun. And each one of these pellets is a different definition of what ADD is, yeah. right? And why does it particularly go that way? And then they try to treat it with medication. That's fucking, uh, not to be controversial, but come on. So you're a Scientologist? No. no. <laughs> but it, it just, there are ways to certainly guide it yeah. and, and, you know, recognize it and then try to do something with it. It's like dyslexia. And yeah, I, I'm shocked that it's still so overlooked and misdiagnosed. Uh, my brother, as it turned out, uh, severely dyslexic, and they never knew. And so my mother was always very worried that something's wrong here, right? Well, no. Is this the oldest brother? Yeah. Yeah. What, what was the diagnosis on him? Well, they said that because he'd had a high fever, it's going to have a, you know, he's going to have a uh, lessened brain function oh got it right and that never happened yep he, he went on to run my dad's business right took it right over. into the ground yeah. go ahead no 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 he <laughs> okay. he did well with it um but yeah so but the, her focus on that rather than the rest of us uh my sister had once told me uh that her our mother her mother <laughs> <laughs> had said i don't know how you and will we just put <laughs> wow <laughs> have wow come up behind them she said, I don't know how you and, and uh, 
Mary Rose, I don't know how you and David learned your ABCs because I was so focused on uh, Mark, which tells me what I knew, which was like, oh, I was just alone, which in one way, isn't that what you want? Like, leave me the F alone. Yeah. But the other, uh, the other thing I always, uh, 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 instead of writing that blank sheet of paper, I've always equated it to um, the wrong software. Mm. Like, you've got your mainframe. There it is. Now, all the wires are just out here, and it's up to you to plug them in and build your own software. But no, no, you're given, you're going to run this software, which is called Catholicism, right. and everything it means. And there is no other software you're allowed also, to Also, good luck. Truly the best of luck trying to put new software on. <laughs> When you've installed, it's it's like it's like when you two put their album on the iPhone and you couldn't delete it. Uh -huh. That's what Catholicism is. True. It's it, like yes. yo, is there? I mean, every you ever it informs your logic. Your I mean, it there is a level of morality to Catholicism that I find worthwhile. None of them follow it. Well, it's ironic, yeah. But it's like not wrong. I don't think it's wrong. I don't think the Ten Commandments are wrong, especially the stuff about donkeys. I find especially <laughs> relevant. Uh, um, so, so I, I, I completely hear you. And you're also ingesting your parents' f frame, right? Uh, and their experience, yeah, and the way things have to be, yes. And I can only assume that for generations. Everyone just went along with this failed system. See, I started working for my dad when I was seven years old in a manufacturing plant. He owned a-, a, a You are working the smelter? <laughs> <laughs> but kind of, you're near, a, you're, you're near some adult contraption that can kill you. People, some of the machines I worked with, uh, people had lost fingers <laughs> and thumbs. I'm not kidding you. That's what it was like. Yes. It was, I have some jokes about it. It was so disorganized. You can't, you can't believe it. I was seven and made to work after school every day for five cents an hour. And my dad would say, I'm overpaid at that price. Oh, what's this? You know, as big as he spends his bubble gum. <laughs> and in my mind, I would think, of course, I wouldn't correct him. You don't let me buy bubble gum. It's not like, oh, I got bubble gum money. Yeah. Like, it was relegated all the way down to like I wouldn't have, I wasn't allowed to buy a Mad magazine like that's too risque. You know I couldn't go down to Hex Drug Store and just buy a comic book. No, this no. is in the 30s. When right? was this? <laughs> yeah, I remember my my parents threatening me with military school uh, around 13, <clears throat> and my thought was, oh please send me, just get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> this does not work. Yeah, because I thought to myself, good. Because when I go to military school, I'm going to learn to play guitar, and I'm probably going to be a rock star. So just so you know, just so you know, that's you how send it's going to go down. There's going to be nothing but excellence coming back. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, which is also kind of the plot of one of the greatest novels or YA is Catching the Rye, which is military school. Ah. Which I forgot about till recently. I was like, oh yeah, you fucking went to. I have to say, I never read it. it you would. I know. I would love it. You would love it based on that. And then based on that, that whole like, well, just say, that's the whole tone. Like, well, just so you know, and it, yeah, it's like a bunch of phonies. <laughs> He's constantly talking about phone. It's I, great. I've read Franny and Zoe, which is another. Really? Okay. No, movie. I mean, that's yeah. more tender. Yeah. Catching the Rye is like desperate. And, yeah. And that's what, like we were talking about earlier, that's where a lot of kids are. You're desperate to know. And I don't think my kids are desperate. I really don't. I mean, there might be some desperation that, that's unspoken to me. Um, and there's always a sense of desperation that any human probably has. But I don't think they may, they don't necessarily feel it to the point where they are, are desperate to get that. Back. They want to go to military school. Right. right. <laughs> they used to make me run to the post office to pick up the mail. So we didn't get mail delivered to our house. There was a post office. That the was a 19, hat. again, it was 1930s. <laughs> 1929. You knew Superman, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The mail, the post office was a half a mile away. And they would make me run to the post office to get the mail and run home because I had so too much energy. We would go out on, here's the, punishing thing on Sundays after church every Sunday and then every Sunday we go to my grandmother's house and they'd all talk for an hour or two and there's nothing to do you can't go go explore then we'd go for a long car ride out in the country and our, our country squire station wagon and I'm sure I'd be torturing that 
fuck out of my brothers and sisters. They'd make me get out and run along the side of the car. <laughs> fuck, that's hilarious. That's how much energy. That's like, that's how exhausted they were. Like, get the fuck out of, they didn't, never said fuck, but get the fuck out of the car, leave everyone alone, and just, just run alongside the car. Yeah, my brother Tommy, I, it was before I was born, but apparently he fell out of a moving car. He fell out of the station wagon. Talking about impulsivity, I once, very young, opened the car door and put my foot down like I was going to go feel what it was like to to put your foot outside and feel yeah. along the like. Which we're all curious about. <laughs> Look, you'd be a, a liar to say we're not all curious about that. You did you do it? I put my foot out, and my mom was like, "What are you doing?" I got, I probably got within two inches of. I was just going to, you know. Yeah, you just, just yeah, tap the road one. <laughs> No, 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 I'm just skimming. <laughs> uh, well, at least they didn't want to kill you. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Um, I used to do a joke about, uh, do you remember when there was this fad in the 80s when kids would fall down a well? Uh-huh. <sighs> they should bring that fad back. <laughs> yeah. All, but also, I haven't heard uh, f uh, from wells. They just disappeared somehow. Well, they finally filled them in with concrete thank right, you something something like yeah i, I guess i we guess we should fill yeah, like we in. had were they active wells no they would be you know wells that were just that were old and these are wells folks that are just two feet wide and so kids would fall down can you imagine the horror and then there'd be a week though they'd be the rescue team would well, be baby jessica right I think that was the first one, right? Yeah, like that. that was the. But also, the horror doesn't sound any worse than what you were going through. <laughs> so, uh, I was down my own well. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe, and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system. I'm not really used to the green screen.